Howdy everyone and welcome back to The More You Grow. Last week we all wrapped up Thanksgiving. It was a wonderful time I spent with my family eating lots of great food, great nutrition. And speaking of nutrition, nutrients are super important for our plants as well, especially our container plants. And they can't just up and tell us what's wrong and what they're deficient in, or can they? In this video I'm going to talk about all the major nutrients that your plants need how to identify those nutrient deficiencies and how to take care of those. So let's go check it out. The nutrients that are important to our plants can be divided into two different categories, macronutrients and micronutrients. Macronutrients are the nutrients that our plants use a lot of, so we always gotta make sure that they always have them readily available. And they can be further divided into two more categories, primary nutrients and secondary nutrients. Our primary nutrients are things that we hear about the most, such as nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. Our secondary nutrients are things such as calcium, sulfur, magnesium, and they're gonna be used by your plants a lot, so we gotta make sure that those are gonna be always available to the plants. Micronutrients, on the other hand, are nutrients that our plants just use trace amounts of. They're still very important, but they're not gonna use them as much as they will the macronutrients. Each nutrient performs an important role in the functions of our plants. Just to give you examples, nitrogen is important for the leaf growth and green growth. So if you're trying to grow things such as lettuce or spinach, you gotta make sure to have plenty of nitrogen because we're gonna be harvesting those leaves. And in the case of phosphorus, it's important for root growth, flower, fruit, and seed growth. So if we're trying to grow things for the fruit, such as our vegetable gardens with our tomatoes and our peppers, things like that, Phosphorus is very important. And potassium is important for things such as metabolic functions for disease prevention. So that's just a few examples. All the nutrients provide important roles and being able to identify nutrient deficiencies in our plants is going to help us to be more productive and to prevent more problems along the way. So let's talk about how to identify nutrient deficiencies in our plants. So how can you tell if your plant has a deficiency? And how can you tell what nutrient it's deficient in? So that way you can get it what it needs and not spend a lot of extra time and money giving it things it doesn't need. Well, I'm gonna give you an awesome tool in this video that's gonna make you one step closer to being a plant pro. And we're gonna use that tool to properly identify the nutrient deficiency in this plant. So we're gonna use this, I'm gonna show you how to use it, and that way you can use it for your plants at home. So let's go give it a shot. Using this small rhombaton tree as our example, let me teach you how to use this chart to identify nutrient deficiencies. First of all, we need to choose whether we're looking at the young leaves or the old leaves and where the problem is at. In this case, it's our young leaves or the newest leaves that has the issue. So if we go on to the next level of our chart at young leaves, we either have to choose chlorosis or necrosis. Chlorosis means yellowing of leaves or the lack of chlorophyll. And chlorophyll is what makes the leaves green. Necrosis just means dead or brown leaves. In this case, we can see we have chlorosis here. So if we go on to the next level, we either have to look at where the chlorosis is on the leaf. In this case, it is in between the leaves, but not in the veins. You can still see the veins there are green. So in that case, it's gonna be our selection called intervenal or between the veins. And as we can see, if we move over to the right, it's a zinc, manganese, and iron copper deficiency. So it's our micronutrients that are the issue. And so now we've used that chart, we can properly identify which of our nutrients is deficient in our plant. So now that we know how to use our nutrient deficiency chart, we found that this rhombaton tree has an iron deficiency. And so now that we know what is wrong with our tree, we can get the nutrients we need to it. And how are we gonna do that? Well, I'm going to use a liquid chelated iron here. It also has a lot of other secondary nutrients that plants need. And so if you have a deficiency in any of those, this should work pretty well. And what you do is you mix this up in water about two tablespoons per gallon. I've got some pre-mixed here and put into a water bottle. We're gonna make sure people don't think this is fruit mix or something because I think they'd find out pretty quick. It's not gonna taste very good. So I've got it mixed up here. I'm gonna apply this as a uh, soil application. You could do a foliar application, spray it down 
on the leaves, but I'm just going to do it in the soil because it'll kind of last a little bit longer, I would think. And that's just the way I've always done it. So one thing I want to bring up is that not every negative leaf symptom means a nutrient deficiency. I know that I used to think that if I ever saw anything going wrong with my plants, it was a nutrient issue. But that's not always the case. Other things can be overwatering. It can be uh, pathogens. It could be insect damage. It could be due to drift from an herbicide or a pesticide burning the leaves. So there's a lot of things out there that can cause your leaves to have some kind of damage. And it really just takes learning what those look like and what causes different signs and symptoms on your plants. So that just takes time, that takes a learning curve. And once you get it figured out, it becomes a lot easier to figure out what's going wrong with your plants. So now that we saw how to identify different nutrient deficiencies, let's talk about fertilizer and how often you should be fertilizing your container plants. So what are some of the fertilizers we can use and how often should we be fertilizing? I know this is something that I actually struggle with a lot myself because I will just not think about it. I don't even realize that my plants need anything until I start seeing one of the symptoms like we saw on our chart. And I have to do better about understanding that it's my responsibility as that plant owner to make sure that my plants have the nutrients they need because they can't branch out, go find more nutrients in the soil as they would in nature because we have them in a pot and they can't go anywhere. So it's our job as plant owners to give them the nutrients that they need in the container that they have. So what are some of the fertilizers we can use? There are things such as water soluble fertilizers that are great for more regular feeding. When you water your plants, there are things such as slow release uh, fertilizers to where they come in a pellet form. We can apply it to that soil and they will slowly release over time, giving those plants nutrients over a longer period of time where we don't have to fertilize as often. And then there's things such as organic fertilizer. And I know a lot of you are interested in that. And there's terms I'm gonna say in this that I don't want you to confuse. I'm gonna be talking about how if we apply an organic fertilizer, I consider that a slow release fertilizer because it takes time for those microbes in the soil to break down that organic fertilizer into an inorganic state, which our plants take up. And don't let those terms confuse you. I'm not talking about certified organic here. I'm not talking about synthetic in any way. When I talk about organic, I'm saying from a living source and inorganic is a mineral based source. And our plants, surprisingly, don't take up organic sources of nutrients. They can't. It takes time for microbes to break down those nutrient sources from an organic state into their base element. So saying something such as manure, it takes time for a microbe to break down that manure into the base element, such as nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and so on. So if we apply an organic fertilizer, think of it as a slow release. That's gonna take time for that to break down. So if your plants need nitrogen really quick or they need something, some kind of nutrient really quick, you're gonna to to look at a more quick release version, something like a water-based or a water-soluble fertilizer to where it can get to that plant, get to it quickly, and get where it needs to be. So how often should we be fertilizing? Well, it really depends. It depends on the plants you have, the conditions that they have, such as light, uh, warmth, uh, water, all those things. So understand the plant that you're growing and look online. Look at how often you should be fertilizing that plant and start just kind of paying attention to a calendar maybe. Uh, there's some of my plants that I fertilize with water-based fertilizer uh, every week or so, maybe every other week. Then there's plants that I only fertilize just every so often because they don't require a lot of nutrients. So that really comes down to the plant you're trying to grow and just doing your research online on how much nutrients it needs and understanding what requirements it needs. So that's really all I have for nutrients and fertilizers. If you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. If you have any more questions for me on fertilizers or how to identify nutrient deficiencies, leave that down in the comments. And if you haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Go check us out on Facebook and Instagram and hit that bell icon for notifications. Until next time, I hope you'll join me right here on The More You Grow.